channel, guys. Roger Willett. Uh, Ryan was asking me about my setup. I shoot a Pro Comp Elite XL. Really liking it. It's a new one for this year. Uh, the Bee Stinger bars with lots of weight on the back. That's a 12 ounce bar or a 12 inch bar with 19 ounces on the back and 34 inch bar on the front with 9 ounces up front. I love the viscosity bow strings, the XL sight, the True Spot scope, six power with a eighth inch black dot. And got the AAE arrow rest. It's bulletproof. And for my arrows, I like to shoot the 27 12s with 250 grain points. They're 32 inches long with the AAE Max Hunter veins. Those are Easton's? Easton shafts, X2712s, X7s. Okay. And how'd you shoot on your first round this morning? I shot pretty good. I shot a 300. My X count was a little low, but got the important part. So move on to the next round at 4 o'clock. All right, man. Good luck. Thanks. Thanks, pal. Hey, Bridger Deaton. You're shooting a Hoyt Pro Comp Elite. Uh, with Bee Stinger stabilizers and gold tip arrows, running a Scott sight with a specialty archery housing, full, using a four power, trophy taker rest, uh, shooting my own custom strings, diamond quality, and shooting a Scott release. So, All right, good luck this weekend, man. All right, thank you. I have been engineered to be launched from today's high performance shooting equipment. I must withstand and deliver over 80 foot-pounds of energy, shot after shot after shot. Powering through hide, flesh, and even bone. From the tournament trail to the trail head, when I return to my quiver, I'm still straight. I am Gold Tip, the toughest arrow you will ever shoot. Okay, a little bit of, this is Tim Gillingham here at uh, Phoenix City, Alabama. Uh, talk to you guys a little bit about my setup if you're interested what I've got what I shoot indoors here and I shoot the same arrow for 3d is a gold tip triple X Pro uh, for indoors I run a four fletch four inch pattern you know I believe in overkill indoors I got that new Acolyte knock with a unibush and a 200 grain point now I'm a 32 and three quarter inch draw I shoot these at 28 and a half inches on the carbon to carbon and I shoot them off of an, an overdraw cut right to the rest and I find I get my best results there. So that's the arrow setup. Um, as a shooter, you know, when you're looking and building arrows, one of the things that I, I give you a little tip real quick is when, you, when you're building your loop, one of the things you want to consider is how the knock fits on the loop, okay? You want to completely capture the knock up and down and you want to be able to have the knock be able to, or the, the string to be able to, to spin freely in the knock. Now, that requires a knock to be made correctly too. The knock has to hold the, the string right up against the, the front of the knock while it's doing that. So I think you'll find that the gold tip knocks have been designed you know, that way for a reason. Okay. Um, moving on to the bow, I'm shooting the Hoyt Comp Pro here. Now as I stated before, I'm a 32 and 3 quarter inch draw length and this is kind of a custom bow. Hoyt allows me to run the 3,000 limbs on it, which gives me a little bit longer axle to axle bow, and makes the bow a little bit more forgiving for me. So I've got it uh, built up here, just shy of a nine inch brace height, about 42, 40, 42 and a half inches axle to axle, okay? And it's just a heck of a bow. This bow still shoots you know, around 335 foot a second. Incredible bow all the way around for my draw length. Uh, and if you're 31, 32 and under, the, the, uh, the, the standard XL version would be just fine. So uh, just a heck of a bow. The new features of the bow, you've got the new uh, stabilizer mount down low here. Um, the reason you see a lot of us mounting our stabilizers down low here is it creates a wider fulcrum, you know, for the stabilization unit to, to rotate around. If everything's mounted right here, it's going to pivot a lot faster, okay? So mounting this stabilizer lower like this really helps quite a bit. So I've got a 15-inch Premier Plus back bar, 24 ounces of stack weights on the front. I've got a Premier Plus 30-inch uh, bar. And I'm not exactly sure what I got on the front here. I've got eight, nine, about 15 ounces in the front. Okay, that's including adding two two grains for the uh, enhancer. So that creates a, a nice sight picture for me that slows down very quickly. Um, it's a lot of mass weight. I think this bow's probably around 10 pounds, nine and a half, 10 pounds. I haven't really measured it. So 
Um, the bee stinger stabilizers do a very good job of slowing that motion down fast. So if you don't get a chance, you don't have a set, you know, come by our booth at the tournaments this year. We're going to have, you know, booth set up at most of the tournaments. You can come by and try the, the bee stinger stabilizers for your buy them. It is an expensive purchase, but I think once you put them on your boat, you're really going to see the demos. So on the site set up here, I run a CBE, you know, Elite. Uh, just a phenomenally good site. Uh, it's really, you know, well thought out. Nothing can really go wrong with it. it holds a level. One of the one of the criteria for myself personally on on sites is is that site's got to hold a level. If that site does not hold a level very well, if it's got too much slop up here in the head unit, it, it's going to cost you. It's going to cost you outdoors, especially. You know, when you know that, you know, a full bubble is seven inches at you know at 50, 60 yards. Yep. You know, a quarter bubble is still two inches, so it's not acceptable for that site to not be level. Um, I'm running a shrewd, small shrewd scope with a six power lens. You know, currently how I have it set up here, you can see with a big dot. Uh, I, I've been shooting an eight power indoors with a small dot. After Vegas, I went to a bigger dot. Uh, I cover most of the yellow, and I, I notice I get a lot more inside out X's that way. Um, my shooting style, you know, was pretty tricky on on this target, but I try to do the best I can on it. So. I'm running Perline strings with uh, Brown L SX2 material. I've had nothing but good to say about this SX2. Uh, Joe Hamilton at uh, at, at uh, you know Perline bowstrings builds a heck of a nice bowstring, and, and, and some of the best prices in the industry too. So uh, if you haven't tried a Perline string, you know have them build you up a set, and I think you're really gonna like them. So. Um, some of the other equipment on my bow, let's look at the arrow rest here. Arrow rest, I believe, is one of the key parts of, of, of this particular setup. I run this arrow rest. I actually helped design this arrow rest. Then this is a Hamsky Versa rest, okay? It's designed off of all the failure points of every other limb-driven rest I've run. I've run a limb-driven drop wave for about 10 years now. I wouldn't shoot anything but a limb-driven drop wave for various reasons. It allows me to get all the benefits of a blade, but none of the negative. Okay, so you see, I, and you can configure it about any any way you want. Okay, I've got a a, a twelve thousandths best launcher on here right now, so I get you know perfect clearance. I get a nice soft launch off of a blade, but I get uh, you know perfect clearance. If you look closely there, you can see that the uh, the blade is actually bent a little bit up, so it kind of cradles the arrow. I don't know if you can see that on the video or not, but but I cradle it. But this Hamsky rest. We cancel all the play out here with the, you know, with the E-clip on the side, so you have no left to right play in it. You got bearings on both sides; they're just pristine uh, spring tension movement. You know, you got stop screws on the bottom here. This controls the up and down position of the rest, so you basically have nothing that can come loose. Now, if you look on the other side of the rest, you have an eight-sided leverage, leverage arm here, and the eight-sided arm never slips. Even if it does come loose, it's not slip. The cord attached to the limb here is a wrap-around system, and one of the key uh, patented parts of this particular rest is the spring clamp. Okay, the spring here really buffers the slam. Okay, that limb goes past static; it's pulling on that rest. So if you have it hardwired to the limb, you're going to get some bouncing action in the launcher, and you're also going to get a lot of abuse to the rest. So that is pretty key to this this whole setup. So um, as far as a, a release goes. Um, I'm running a uh, little Scott Wildcat here on a strap connection. Um, personally, I think there's nothing more accurate. I mean, every release is, you know, I, sh I shoot a little bit of back tension too. I shoot a Scott Longhorn uh, in practice, and, and I may end up doing something indoors with it, but until I get better in, you know, at home with it, I'm probably not going to shoot it in a tournament. So um, I feel like the index finger is, you know, probably one of the more accurate releases on the market simply because everything's in a linear line. It's really hard to change the jaw position left or right by anything you do with your hands. So um, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Uh, that's that's my equipment for indoor. So, uh, if anybody ever has any questions, you know, they can contact me at Gold Tip. I'm there. You know, that's my full-time job, or I'll be at the tournaments manning all the booths, you know, for Gold Tip and Bee Stinger. So we'll see you on the road.